The magnitude of the impulse delivered to a soccer ball when the player kicks it with a force of 1500 newtons. Assume the player's foot is in contact with the ball for 5.1 times 10 to the time to sorry times 10 to the negative third power seconds. All right. So in uh, simply put, okay, impulse, which is sometimes I, sometimes J, but never quite what you expect. Let's go with I is defined as the change in momentum, okay? Change in P, uh, or rho, actually. Change in momentum. And since momentum is gonna be mv, all right? What's the one thing you can change in here? Well, it's most likely gonna be the v. That means that the change in momentum is most likely just gonna be m distributed into a change in velocity. So impulse equals change in momentum equals m delta v. But there's another way of expressing it too. Another very useful way, right? f delta t also turns out to be the same thing. And as a side note, you get the interesting result here when you kind of take these two things and you set them equal to each other as they are. You can rearrange this. You can divide both sides by delta t which means that you wind up getting F is equal to M delta V over delta T, or what you may find more familiar as MA, because change in velocity over change in time is MA. So that's all related to Newton's second law. That's kind of a simple look at impulse and momentum. But what we need for this particular problem, okay, is going to be that version. Okay, so impulse equals F delta T. And we're going to talk about um, how we have a force of 1500 newtons acting over a total time of 5.1 times 10 to the negative 3 seconds. Okay, so if I'm going to do this, I have 1500, I'll put in my calculator here, times 5.1 e negative 3, that comes out to 7.65, and the units for this must be the same as they are for momentum, right? Because m delta v, and from a unit standpoint, it's not really any different than mv, comes out to kilogram meters per second. Okay, so in order to have impulse, you have to have a collision of some sort, okay? A collision that lasts a certain amount of time, in this case, or that results in a change in velocity. And usually what we're talking about here is a change in direction, right? So you could express this uh, soccer ball as having a, you know, a final velocity of, uh, well, some final velocity. We weren't actually given what it was, nor do we know the mass, so we can't calculate it. But the assumption is that the initial velocity was zero. So all, that, all this momentum that it's been given, assuming that it started with zero momentum, is equal to I, and it can be calculated by F delta T.